What's going on guys? Junior's Fishing Company here again with another time video. Uh, we're going to do some more deer here today. The last one I posted was a little uh, baby bass pattern. Um, we're going to do kind of like a fire tiger um, deer here today. This is a 3 8 ounce, I think they're Deep V, I think that's what they're called, Deep V Jig by uh, Northern Tackle. I really like these jigs because I just like big eyes. A lot of the stuff I, a lot of the eyes I put on, even on flies, the eyes are usually, I mean fish have really big eyes. Um, so I'm a sucker for a, a jig with good eyes. Um, yeah, 3 8 ounce, I think. This is probably a 3 8 ounce, maybe one out jig hook. Um, it's a pretty flexible hook, though. It's not a super heavy duty um, hook. And so on kind of thinner hooks like this, I try to make the, the bait a little bit thinner. Um, I don't no rhyme or reason why, but um, this bait like a lot of uh, um, jigs like this, had a little um, bait keeper on it. Most of the time I'm able to kind of bend that up and wiggle it out, but for some reason these are like, I don't know, some they're super strong, like, so I couldn't quite get my tool under there to bend it up to get it off, so I'm gonna have to wrap over this point quite a bit. I cut off the part that came out, which is what ho actually holds the bait. Um, so I'm gonna have to make some extra wraps right there so I don't cut my thread, but uh, I'm gonna do red thread, 210, and um, the tail of this bait, I'm gonna actually do a hackle tail. Um, not like rooster, but it's going to be like a saddle hackle. Um, and I'm not going to go all the way down. You can go down as far as you want. The first thing I want to do is try and get see that almost snapped my thread right there. I just want to get some thread and I can end up putting like a stack of hair on either side of the the bump so I won't hit it a ton. I won't have to worry about anything so I just want to put a little down there. So I'm going to be using, um, I just have a bunch of these. I think Kiag makes these. These aren't uh, whiting by any means, but these are just half saddles. You can get these at a lot of different fly shops. Uh, I think all of these have been ordered from Fly Fish Food. Um, Musky Fool's got them. Orvis sells them. I mean, they're really, they're pretty. And you can see, I, I've used quite a bit. I've had these for, these last a lot longer than you think. You spend 30 bucks on something like this, and you think, well, oh, gosh. But um, they actually last a lot longer. You can tie dry flies with them, um, but I mainly use them. I tie a couple dry flies, but I mainly use them for either these really long, thin strands, which is what I'm going to be putting on this tail, or um, if you come on to like the bottom, you can actually get some good... Um, almost like a schloppany um, feather, uh, really thick, and so these would work great too. Um, this bait runs a little bit shy of two inches. Uh, I usually make my a bait like this between four and five inches. Um, I swear I've said it a million times, but it runs small. Um, so I always err on the side of a little too long. I think five inches will be about right here, um, right where my spring is. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a base layer of 
deer hair. Uh, I've got all my deer hair ready and stacked. I've got my feathers kind of ready to go. Um, but I don't want this to go quite as far down as my feathers. These feathers are so thin. And if you don't, if you don't put a ton of them or something under it, um, they just run so thin. And you're not really stripping this in the water when you strip like a streamer or something, it can glide and those feathers might kind of come out. But this is more of just like a vertical presentation. So that might be good. I'm going to trim my hair, cord up my thread. And I'm not going too far down here. This is a really long shank. And I'm just not overly concerned with using up that whole. I could. I've put quite a bit of rattles on these, but um, I'm not going to do a rattle today. Push it around, and this on this under deer hair under the feathers is just I just did red and chartreuse um, you're not going to be able to see it a whole lot anyway so I'm not too worried about having a bunch of different colors and stuff like that and I don't want it to flare like at all um, if it flares that's not the end of the world but um, it'll kind of just stick through those feathers so you just want it laying flat and if you have to make some wraps back toward your hook point um, that'll help keep it flat and I put a big thread base right here because that's where I'm going to put uh, my hackle so I'm going to come back up here and I might just put a little bit of head cement let it get in the, the hair small jigs like this kinda get kicked around pretty good deer hair is crazy tough though so I've got, a, not a ton, but I've got quite a bit of feathers and I've kind of mixed, I've got four little stacks and they all have about four feathers in them. Um, you can see I've got two chartreuse and a blue in this one. I've got some orange chartreuse and yellow in this one. I've just mixed them together. So then that way I'm not worried about um, you know, if I put all my blues down, and then I put all my yellows down, and then I put all my... Then it's not going to... If you put black deer hair over white marabou, it's just going to be a, basically a black jig. So you kind of want to mix all of your stuff up. That's why I have a hard time on like a fire tiger pattern like this doing yellow, and then all red, and then all... I usually prefer to kind of mix them in. And I've tapered out all of these if you just pull and they pop out at different times you know it's tapered decently well and I want to go right to about my brass and I'm just gonna cut these and I'm not worried about um, laying them down in a certain way kind of just separate them out a little bit and I'll come to the other underside I want to be careful with how many I put on this underside I'm only going to put three because th these are the ones that are really going to get tangled um, in my hook it'll happen it's just kind of a matter of when 
not F. on that side okay and I'm gonna finish this off with glue so now I've got two more I've got some on top bottom and I'm gonna put two on the sides and again it's gonna be a ton of feathers but um, these feathers are so thin that even if you get 12 of them on one of these jigs um, it really doesn't look absolutely massive. And I threw a little blue in here. Obviously most fire tiger patterns aren't gonna have much blue in them. I'm gonna take a couple out of this one. Um, Take the yellow one out. And I've got these tapered already, so I don't have to worry about tapering them as I put them on. They're all already tapered. I just want it to sit. I'll give it one loose wrap like that, and you can kind of pull your thread and it'll want to roll, but you don't want it to roll too much because this is supposed to be on the side anyway. So I've got all my hackle on there, and I'm just going to kind of douse this with some glue just to make sure that it stays where I want it to. And I can kind of come in here and you know you can do this a lot neater make sure I don't get any glue on my scissors these are old ones anyway I try to have an old pair of scissors around when I'm cutting stuff with glue on it but they're upstairs you go through a lot of scissors if you get super glue all over them. And then maybe just a little half itch. So now I've got plenty of room for my deer hair. I can kind of clean up a little bit. Um, I'm going to do three stacks of deer hair total. I'll probably do one here and then I'll get two up here. I have that bump. So I'll do one down here and then I'll do two up here. After I do this one down here, <clears throat> I'm gonna actually put down polar flash. I'm not gonna use holographic. <clears throat> so my first stack is gonna be my thinnest one. This is, I'm using orange, yellow, chartreuse, and a, just a hint of red. I just don't like a lot of red. So I just use a hint of red. And I want that to go, if that goes to about there, maybe a little bit shorter. Because I want to make sure that I have plenty of room for my hackle to kind of do what they want. Cinch down good. I like the, the this lemon bobbin, but I gotta tighten it. This thread slips out so easily. It can be kind of frustrating. Work it around my hook. Again, this is a really thin um, 
layer of bucktail. So it's barely even going to make it all the way around. Should be good. And there won't be much flare in this at all. There's a little bit. You can kind of see a couple. But I'm not worried about flare yet. Get those secured and in there. And I don't know if you can see this, but this extra hair at the edge is kind of flaring out from that um, beekeeper that I tried to get off for 10 minutes and gave up. So I apologize. Now, I think I'll put my flash down now. No, maybe I'll wait. I'll wait. Alright, second layer of bucktail. Just want it to be a little bit shorter than the other, than that first stack. And I'm going to leave on some extra hair here because I want to build up this a little bit. It's If you put too much deer hair on a thin hook like this, it's not going to stick as well. So that last layer plus my flash, I want to put just a little bit more down. Work it around. And the difference between a jig like this, like making your own, and you know, a lot of companies have deer hair jigs now. I feel like those hair jigs that you buy are just, they just take a clump of hair, tie it on, tie it off, glue it, and call it good. There's never much flare in the hair. You don't know. Most of the time it's probably way too thick. I haven't bought in a ton of them. But, um, you know, it's a little bit of an investment to get started on your own, but then you really can't complain when a jig's not working. Because you made it. <laughs> then it'll bring me right up to my head. So now I've got a nice little area to do some flash. And you can see how flimsy this hook is by much pressure I'm putting on it but so you want to be careful if you put anything too heavy over this it's just gonna mat down the hair I've got some polar flash and some sort of gold I don't think the color is on the back but just a little bit I like polar flash. I mean, holographic flash was super limp too. You just want something that's going to be really limp and it's not going to completely mat down your hair. I'm going to split this in half ish. I'm going to put one 
on top or on bottom and spread it and then I'll do the other I want to taper this a little bit so just pull it out taper it So time, the glue's dry-ish enough. Um, I'm going to put on this last layer of bucktail, and then I'm going to trim. Um, when I, in the marabou videos, I use these hair clips a ton to kind of keep down everything, keep everything out of my way. I don't really do that a ton with deer hair. I don't know, I find that it's got a little bit more memory in it. Um, that might be my stupid opinion. Um, an aficionado might be watching this laughing, but I just try not to pinch down too much because I think it's good. it kind of just mats down the flare that you want. Um, that's just my opinion. So I want this to be the shortest. I've got a couple extra long hairs in here. There's just a couple up here. Um, I like to have a couple. I mean, they can all be the same size. You can do whatever you want. But And I'm going to cut this a little bit longer than I actually need it. I'm going to get my thread right up um on my head as far up as I can get it I'm gonna put a little bit of hair right on the head I'm gonna come again as high up as I can I'm gonna give it two wraps and then I'm gonna pull down away from my hook and I don't want to do it too hard because there might be a lot of flare in this hair and I don't want these to flare a ton if you've ever spun deer hair, those ends will flare as much as the, if not more, because there's so much. So I'm going to get this all the way around first. And again, this is my thickest clump that I've put on. And with that head there, sometimes these hairs don't want to do what you want them to. But um, you just got to do your best. So now I'm going to try and hold these hairs. And then I can apply that flare pressure. There's not a ton of flare in here. That's all right. too much. I just don't want my thread to break. So I'm going to give this a couple good tight wraps and I'll get a couple of those spare the hairs over here they'll get pushed over that's okay. You can trim those out 
couple really good wraps. You want to wrap it tight 360, so I'm going to... want to make sure you're getting good wraps all around your hook. Just take your time. So it should be good. So now I'm going to kind of just lightly bring my thread back. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to go right onto my red thread And I'm going to cut those hairs off. And if I cut my thread here, I have enough wraps on there where it will stay on. That's why you don't do this with four wraps on your stuff. Sometimes you hit it, you just do. But then you can just rewrap and you don't have to worry about having to start from scratch. Sharp razor blade helps too. So And you can see how small this collar is going to be. I just really don't like a big collar. And I can kind of flare these out. Yeah, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. That collar is just really thin, but I know with how much that was on this side, I wrapped right down in the middle of that hair, and then I just cut off the ends, so I don't really have to worry about, oh, I just had the tip of the hair wrapped in there, and it's going to be easy to pull out. I mean, I could, I mean, my vice is clamped down, but I mean, I can bend that hook just by pulling on that hair. I know it's not going to go anywhere ever. And my collar is still somewhat good to go. I just want to make sure I covered all my hairs. So now you're good to whip finish and do whatever. And if you watch the other video, I use head cement and not super glue on my collars. They're both crazy durable. It's not like super glue isn't as durable. It might be more. But um, sometimes super glue will dry white or it'll clump. This won't. This won't do either of those things. You want to get all the access off though. And that's just going to soak in to my thread. So, 3 8 ounce. How did this turn out to be? About 5. Maybe there's a couple that go to about five and a quarter. Five inch, no rattle, nothing fancy. Yellow, green, little bit of red, red collar, deep V, deer hair jig. Um, with some flare, 
This will look good in the water. These uh, thin saddles um, really dance really well in the water. Give us a follow on Instagram at Junior's Fishing Company. Uh, appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I'll have more to come. If there's something you want specifically, just put a comment below. Uh, I think the next one I'm going to do is going to be a black marabou uh, chatterbait with a little curly tail um, that I tie on. So, uh, yeah, see you soon.